you know, they want, they want it to be okay. And then you see, then the, the person who's taking care of them is, ends up having the reaction that you think the person who has dementia would have. Welcome to EW's The Awardist. I'm David Canfield, Entertainment Weekly's Movies Editor, and I'm joined today by Stanley Tucci and Colin Firth, stars of the film Supernova, in which uh, the pair play a long-time couple forced really to accept that their journey uh, together is coming to an end, as Stanley's character um, struggles with early-onset dementia. And I wanted to start with you, Stanley. I, I know you got the script for this film first, and you sent it straight to Colin. Is that correct? Yes, I did. I did. Um, <laughs> why Colin? <laughs> well, I heard he was, I heard he was a pretty good actor. So I thought, mm, why not? Um, well, no, I have, you know, we, we have worked together twice, uh, many years ago, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we've always wanted to work together. I, I've always wanted to work with him and it just seemed like the right fit of actor and script. And I, I really felt like Colin would get the tone of everything right. So Colin, how do you say no to Stanley Tucci? I guess you don't. Well, you don't really. Um, that's, <laughs> and here we are. I, um, no, I, I tried to think of every possible reason why I should um, reject it. Um, but uh, funnily enough, it's, you know, it's not the first time I've been sent something you know, through a side door, so to speak. It was something very, very particular because I, I didn't know who the director was uh, on first reading. Uh, I didn't know what I'd be reading. Uh, the only association I had with it was Stanley. So it had uh, that association on every page for me. This, this was uh, something that was wrapped up in Stanley and how I, you know, see Stanley and, and uh, a two decade long friendship that we've had. And I couldn't separate it from that. So it was, um, it, it was very much a notional experience of, of something with uh, this very good friend of mine whose work I admire enormously. It's good to get back on the road again, don't you think? But how about just exploring the outer regions of fifth gear? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's quite a production, Dick Pope. Uh, your cinematographer does gives it this beautiful, be the scenery is beautiful, but it also has this um, intimacy that is more difficult to capture than it looks. Colin, you mentioned, of course, uh, your, your friendship with Stanley. Um, I'm curious though, I imagine that informed the dynamic between your characters, but on a deeper level, you're playing a couple that has really spent this lifetime together and, and you see that in every you know, look you share and every, every silence, as you say. What was it like finding that between you, this, this profound, um, profound love, really? You know, we, Colin and I have been friends for a very long time. And, and, <clears throat> and the thing is, we've both been through, when you're our age, you've been through a lot of uh, loss, pain, struggle. And that, when you share that with a friend, over many years, you become incredibly close. And so our love for each other, our respect for each other, and those, that closeness, that intimacy informed, was all sort of already there. A lot of it was already there. When you have a, a really good friend, it, it, it is like, it's like, a, it is like a, a, a lover. It is like a, a, a marriage in a way. You know, every, you know a lot about each other, things that other people don't know, things that even spouses don't know. And that makes you incredibly close. And, and, and what that does is it takes Harry's beautiful uh, poetic script and the silences um, and, uh, that Colin spoke of, <clears throat> excuse me, and the, and the sort of, a negative space of Harry's script. And it makes us able to fill it very easily. It makes us be able to joke around with each other very easily. 
in a way, a lot of our job was already done for us simply by being as close as we are. As we are. Um, the thing is, Harry's script just allowed us to articulate it. That was, that, that, I mean, that was, it was a gift. Colin, did you find that as well, um, you know, finding that natural way in? Yes, I mean, I think Stanley has articulated probably everything that I would have said. Um, I, I, it's, um, you know, there's no question. It's a very, we, we're, we're engaged in a very strange profession. We're, it's, it's a very peculiar thing to be asked to do. Not just the business of, of pretending to be somebody else and assuming other people's experiences, but the fact that um, it, you have to find ways in which it intersects with your own experiences. Hmm. And you can start off thinking that you're a million miles from the character you take on. And as you explore, you, you realize there's more commonality than you thought. And um, you still have to do the job, whether you have 20 years of friendship or not. Um, you know, we're expected to do the job. And if Stanley and I had never met, my hope is that we would have found the same nuances and all this, those, um, those details and arrived at the depth or the semblance of that um, just the same because we're, it's what we're paid to do. Well, maybe, maybe Sam will do it for me. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. you do it for yeah, me. Now, as most of you will know, I'm slowly losing my ability to remember. And I definitely wouldn't be here if it weren't for this man next to me. I think one of the deceptive things is it's not the, the heart-wrenching stuff that's the biggest challenge technically. It's the light stuff. Mm. Uh, that, that's often where I find film's authenticity questionable, is when people mm. are just day-to-day -day moments and they're making each other laugh and there's a little banter. That stuff is often forced because it's really hard. Were the aspects of having worked with Colin in this capacity, really, I think it's safe to say for the first time, um, aspect of his process or, or his interplay with you that surprised you as, as an actor? No, no, I wasn't surprised. No, I wasn't surprised. I, I, I just, um, no, it's always interesting to watch. It's always interesting to watch actors, whether mm -hmm. you know them or you don't know them. I mean, when they watch them sort of behind the scenes or whatever. But um, no, I think I wasn't surprised. I was once again impressed by his diligence uh, and his technique, uh, but also his spontaneity and his uh, uh, just, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty profound talent. And I'm not saying that just because he's- Because I'm here. Because you're here. <laughs> wherever you are but yeah no it's 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 a joy to watch and i remember when we did conspiracy which was an hbo thing we did that that was when we first met 20, 20 years ago mm. um just about 20 years ago i was so impressed with with him and the way he handled his speeches and um just with all of it uh, I, and i st and to this day i mean you know making this little movie, I watched it again. It was really pretty cool to see it. It's nice to see yeah. it. It's exciting. Colin, for you, obviously the dynamic between these two characters is that Stanley's is more accepting perhaps of, of the fate of, of this relationship, whereas yours more is trying to hold on. How did you find that dynamic from your perspective working with Stanley, you know, on, on the craft side of it and finding that, that tension between you? I no, no, no longer know how to identify what was inevitably the script and what we found along the way. Um, mm. it's, I suppose that's complicated by the fact that Stan and I started out thinking we were playing each other's roles. So that switch happened fairly early on, you know, when I'd been sort oh, of reading through it. And maybe it was already woven into the script that that is how these characters uh, deal with the, the, the pain and, and each other. I think it could have worked differently. Um, I think Tusker could have been played uh, with less control. And if whoever was playing Tusker had made different choices, maybe Sam would have been played with a little more. You know, I, I, I don't right. know. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way it came out feels inevitable. You know, Harry sent me a bunch of research that he had done, and I looked at documentaries of people with dementia, which was very hard to. I have no history of it in my family. I have. I, I don't know anyone who's had it. I don't. It, it. It was very, very difficult to do the research. It was painful to see, you know, people suffering, but then also their family suffering. And, mm. and it's harder, you know, I think particularly when people are, you know, in their, I mean, some of these documentaries, people were in their early fifties, late forties. Yeah. I mean, and they just, so to me, it, it was really just about looking at that behavior and making sure that that I created it as truthfully as possible. Because the one thing that I thought was so interesting was that if you have dementia and this particular kind of dementia in the, in the st at the stage that my character was, when you see people with it, they do what the actor should do, which is play against it and laugh about it even. And then suddenly there'll be a moment where they fall apart. But for the most part, if you say, can you do this with this? You know, if they're filming the stuff I saw was them like talking to doctors and <clears throat> I say, can you write the letter, the number four? Hmm. And they go, yeah, sure. I'll write the number four. And they can't. And the first, their first reaction is to laugh afterward. Hmm. So that to me was really significant. That informed very much. I, I like maybe to pride myself on the fact that I play against things a lot, but that pushed me even more in that direction. You know, they want, they want it to be okay. And then you see, then the, the person who's taking care of them is, ends up having the reaction that you think the person who has dementia would have. And that is the thing that makes it so complicated and so painful. Hmm. You see that a lot. I think that's very well put. I, I think what Stanley's talking about speaks to a very useful principle in acting, which is, you know, the best acting, and I think Stanley's portrayal of Tusker is a masterclass in this, is, as I think Stanley alluded to, you, the actor should do what the person would do. Yeah. You know, the, the, the thing that, that you're struggling with, whether it's an illness or uh, uh, or, or the thing, you know, you're, you're usually trying to feel good, not bad. You know, I think quite, mm -hmm. quite a lot of bad acting and where it becomes a kind of strange exhibitionistic mess is when you see somebody trying to be sad. Um, you see somebody trying to be sick. You, most people aren't doing that. You know, most people aren't trying to be angry or trying to be sad. Um, whatever it is, is usually an obstacle. And we were taught at drama school, don't play the obstacle. That's, you know, the obstacle is an obstacle. The thing you're playing is the overcoming of that obstacle. It's like when you see an actor you know, playing drunk, they're trying to be drunk, but, but a drunk person mm. always tries not to be drunk. They don't try to be drunk. They are drunk, yeah. mm. but they try not to be drunk. Mm. Or you watch actors, like you said, try to cry, but actually we all try not to cry. Mm. We all don't want to cry. It's, mm. It hurts too much. Mm. So we try not to do it. So just try not to do it, and that's it. You, and that'll be five dollars for that acting class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm putting it in my pocket right now. <laughs> I think you might be overcharging. <laughs> <laughs> the other element of this film uh, that that resonated for me in this particular moment was, um, you know, you're you're in this van traveling together and you're in a lot of confined spaces and it's a lot of intense time spent together and with nobody else aside from um, one, you know, 
larger part of the movie, um, which obviously resonates uh, given <laughs> the current state of things. Yes, I um, know that was sort of prescient, I suppose, yeah. In, indeed. Um, was that re-watching the film, you know, you made it before, watching the film now, um, and the way it portrays relationships in a way that uh, I'm sure will, will <laughs> hit hard for many, uh, was, was that an interesting experience for you, Colin, at all? That, that does seem to be, I think there's an intensification of, you know, to their response because of the year that we've been having and still having. Yeah. Um, I think that will probably play out differently uh, with different people. But I think issues of isolation, issues of the importance of connectivity, of reaching people that are important to you, being away from the world in some way. Uh, these are all things which I think the film contains, which clearly resonate. Yes. Uh, and loss and grief and fear of that. Um, so I, I, I think people are, uh, are very, very alert to those things. And I also, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of people are thinking about their values. I wanted to end by putting you both on the spot a little bit. Uh, you've known each other for a long time. Um, I'm sure you're fans of each other's work. Uh, do you have a favorite performance of each other's? Stanley, I'm going to start with you. No, that's very hard. Because he's awfully good consistently. Um, I've heard that. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. I, this is like, I'm, I'm very glad you asked this because I still am, I remain unconvinced that he's seen any of it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this whole, Big moment. Uh, let me see, they're all so good. Everything. I'm sorry, you're yeah. very prolific. I haven't seen it before. <laughs> Um, I, well, besides Mamma Mia, <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, it's, it, honestly, that's a, it is a very hard question. You did put me on the spot. It is very hard. Um, I think that I still, and maybe this is just when I, cause I first met you and everything like that, but you've done so many brilliant performances, but I still go back to conspiracy because it was so complex what you had to get across and the way you did it, the way you achieved it was, uh, I, I, uh, I don't even know how you, how you did it. Uh, for me, that's still, I still think about it. Extraordinary. Okay. Colin, it's to you. Um, well, it's it's just as hard. I mean, also because Stanley is so extremely and conspicuously versatile um, that it's like comparing apples and oranges, you know, um, because mm. there are some performances I'll admire for their subtlety and others I'll admire for their extreme lack thereof. Um, <laughs> Shameless. So, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I mean, in, like, sitting opposite, because we had a lot of time to scrutinize each other in conspiracy because we were sitting across a table from each other for weeks. You know, Stanley was playing a very, very dark character with incredible subtlety and containment. You cannot believe the actor who is capable of the performance he gave in things like Hunger Games is the guy who sits there so quietly and doesn't seem to want to draw attention to himself. So Stanley, I think... It's awards worthy for Stanley to even play a guy who doesn't want to draw attention to himself. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's so he has it's he has a range, not just in terms of different characters, but actually in terms of style of acting as well. Uh, mm. I will go to conspiracy as well. I, it might. Is it cheating to say that his performance in Supernova is my favorite? I don't think that's cheating at all. It's no, one of my favorites. I think it is. I think I think Stan has has. Um, I think he's surpassed himself here, which is quite a bar, a bar to surpass. Uh, I think his performance in Lovely Bones was extraordinary, in Big Night. Um, you know, I, I, even when the movie is unworthy of him, I think, you know, he's always... <laughs> and there are so many. <laughs> oh, no. well, you're very kind, and that's, that's enough of that, because I'm getting uncomfortable now. I can't think of a better, more lovely note to end on. That was so sweet of both of you. And I think that is love as we spoke about. Um, yeah. Stanley Tucci, Colin Firth, 
thank you so much. The film is Supernova. It is one of the best of the, I guess not technically year award cycle, year and two months. <laughs> yeah, whenever it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whenever it is. Um, yes, thank you again. This has been The thank Awardist. You. I'm David Campfield. Oh, thank you so much.